Hey everyone, welcome to the How to Think podcast where we interview people who have done amazing things in life and we sit down and talk to them and figure out how they did them and what kind of mindset and paradigm shifts they made upstairs to really make that change and how they think. And today we have an amazing guest. His name is Will Myers. He's a professional trainer. Uh, he's a bodybuilder and nutritionist. And the guy is absolutely amazing. Uh, he is actually my personal trainer that I met about six months ago. And we created this arrangement where I would help him with his business and he would train me. And in my time uh, with him, I've experienced just insane gains in my personal health uh, weight loss, building muscle. And I just wanted to invite him on the show to talk about it. And so over this, uh, I think it's a couple hour interview. We talk about building muscle. We talk about losing weight, especially if you are a busy entrepreneur, we talk a lot about misconceptions and really some awesome tactics. Again, especially if you're busy and you're, you're, focus on you know trying to build a business or accomplish a goal but you still want to be in shape and you still want to further your health goals this is an absolute must watch and uh, as always if you're interested in getting daily success mentoring you can go to howtothink.com and sign up to get daily mentoring with that said let's hop right into the interview this is and get this party started how to think What's up, Will? How you doing, man? My oh, man, doing good, real good. So I had to bring you on because, uh, you know, a lot of times I bring people on the show who have like large social followings or what have you. And, um, but that doesn't always mean they have the best information. And mm, that's true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been working with you now for, um, how long, how long have we been working out together? Six months? I think, yeah, we're, we're crossing into that six months. Yeah. yeah. So, so. Uh, I'm going to actually, if you look at the picture, um, this is what got me. Uh, and I'll, I'll let you tell the story of how we met in a moment, but you, mm. you are a high level, high level personal trainer, bodybuilder, uh, and your transformation from basically a skinny guy that you, I always tell you, you look like that, that dude at the beginning of Iron Man one, yes, that, you skinny, do. <laughs> that skinny dude in the cave, yep. you know, <laughs> um, but that transformation from that to the picture on the right is just right. absolutely insane. And how long did that take? I was about three years, three years. Yeah. And that was completely clean. No gear, no steroids. Absolutely. Yeah. All natural. Wow. Food and hard work, yeah. man. And I know not, I know a lot of people are not going to believe that because um, they, they just don't. They always associate it with that. But I, I've been working right. out with you for six months and we've been, you know, talking and I've, I, I just know because I've, you know, I, I've, we, we talk about it and uh, we meet people that are on and off. And, right. The you know, difference is crazy. Yeah. The di yeah. Because <laughs> you, you see that that immediate over vascularity and, and all that, you know. Yep. Um, you did it naturally with food and, and now that I've worked out with you and I, and your nutrition and, and what you've helped me do, I can totally see how you did that in three years. Um, it's funny because I had personally, you know, being an entrepreneur is tough when it comes to working out, uh, mm -hmm. because not only do you have limited time, but you're sitting a lot and you have fires to put out constantly. And you, sometimes you just have to like go and deal with something, you know, but uh, I had struggled to lose weight for a long time. And then I, I sort of, you know, figured some things out. I bought some programs and I was able to lose weight and I was able to actually lose a lot of weight and get, uh, pretty skinny, but I was skinny. I, I was, remember that photo. <laughs> yeah. I was like super skinny and I was getting like, I was getting comments on like Instagram and stuff like, like, uh, Oh, you're gonna, you need some muscle and da, 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 da yeah, you know? Yeah. And I was never able to do both to like gain muscle and maintain more of a lean lean look. And, uh, since I've been working out with you, I've just, I mean, Brandon, go to, go to the wide shot. Let me, let me see the, like, look at that. I've, my arms have never been that big. I'm just gonna, they're, they're not as big as Will's over here, <laughs> but, but, uh, I've definitely put on some, gr grab that bobblehead real quick. You made it, oh, you, you made a comment. So this right here, this is hilarious. Y'all gonna love this. This right here, somebody <laughs> sent this to me as a, um, as a, as a gift and it's a bobblehead of me. 
<laughs> and you'll notice that my head is pretty large uh, <laughs> and I'm pretty skinny. And this was actually built to scale at the time of me being sent this. It's a perfect before shot, man. It's perfect. <laughs> and, uh, but now, I, but as you said, I need a new one now, right? Cause yeah, you can uh, hold a bunch of those awards now. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. A little guy. So we put him back on the stand. Is he going to hang yeah, out I'm with gonna, us? I'm, we're going to hang out right here. Yeah. <laughs> little bubble. Okay. That's right. That's your past, man. That's yeah. Really good. Yeah. So I wanted to bring you on because I wanted to talk about, cause your, your approach to not just nutrition, but, but lifting weights and all that is very, very different than anything I've seen. And I've been trying to study everything. Um, and I know that nutrition and working out is like a very polarizing topic. You, you post any advice whatsoever about it and you'll have 50 different people with 51 different opinions you know, just going ham on the comments saying, no, oh, that's wrong, this wrong. And generally all those people are, uh, that make those comments are, <laughs> they look like they've been hanging out at Krispy Kreme for a right. little bit too long. So I don't, I don't know. Or they don't have any pictures up. Or they don't have any pictures up. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, so what we're going to do today is I'd like to get into some of this and, uh, and really talk about, cause you know, the whole like burning out certain muscles before you do other muscle groups, the meal timing, like this is game changing stuff. Mm -hmm. I actually eat more calories now and I've been leaner and, and more muscle mass than I ever have eating more. And it's just, it's incredible. Like right. the, the change there. But before we get into that, tell, I'd love for you to share the, uh, the story of how we actually met and mm. what transpired there. Right, right. From the jump, from the beginning. Yeah, from the beginning. Yeah, man. My surprise. I mean, the story is crazy. It's, it's a true story and everything, you know, as crazy as it is seeing you and being surprised with everything. But I used to be a massage therapist and I was on an app that kind of sends you out to different people. So people can basically order a session and you just show up. And so this was something I was doing when I first came down here, down into the new Florida area, building my business, working with personal training, working in You gyms. came from Maryland, right? Yes, in Maryland, yep. yeah. Had a whole yeah. practice up there, had to close everything down, of course, like many people did. And I just took that as an opportunity to move on. But this app was great because no matter where I was, I could log in and it would you know, tell people I'm available. So I received a, a uh, notification for a session. So I got on the road and it actually was on the complete other side of basically Tampa, Florida. You're on the opposite side over there in, uh, in St. Pete. Pete. Yeah. So I was going over to the whole other side and you know, my whole goal was get there, get the session done and roll out. Originally I wouldn't be doing it, but I had a client that canceled. So if anybody is a business owner that's out there, you know, like if something cancels, you want to try to refill that spot instead of just taking the night off. So for me, it was like, okay, so what can I do? So I get on the car, get in the car, get on the road, get to this session. I'm probably about 45 minutes into the drive, maybe about 20 minutes left, and the app just automatically switches and changes. And it says, now I need you to go to St. Pete. There's a new offer, and you don't have to go to this one that's here in or wherever it was, Riverview or something, I don't know. So I texted you through the app. Obviously, I had no idea who I was talking to. And I was just like, hey, man, I'm going to be there at whatever time it was. And I just got right on the road and made the full trip back across town. Oh, man. Went over the big bridge, got into St. Pete. Because I was like, look, this is what I'm doing tonight. I'm a committed person. If I say I'm going to do it, you know, especially when it comes to my business, I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. yeah. I so. think I had ordered it that night. I don't, I don't remember. I think I might have been like sore from jujitsu or something like yeah, something Extra. about your neck, and it was real tight. Well, at th this point, I didn't know. I had no idea what, what I was yeah. kind of walking into, right? And so I get out there in this area, and I've also, in my past, done some Uber driving. So I had actually dropped someone off near your area. And I remember getting past the gates and remember thinking, like, this is a massive place. And the dude I was dropping off was so drunk, so I, I didn't have a conversation with him or anything <laughs> like that. But who knew I would end up back in the neighborhood? So I pull up to the, to the gate. They asked for my information. They got me on the list. They open up this gate. He's like, keep driving until you find another gate. So I'm like, okay, so this is the gated of the gate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, what am I about to walk into? And I've worked with a lot of celebrities in the past and stuff too. So I was kind of excited, almost like, okay, who's this going to be? And I remember pulling into your driveway, cool lights in the ground, little lights in the cement, something I hadn't seen before. And I was just like, all right, this is real deal stuff. Huge fountain in the front two garages, all this cool stuff. And little did you know it would be an internet nerd. No idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm an actor yeah. or something. I'm knocking on the door thinking, <laughs> who is this about to be? This is about to be crazy. And then you, and then all of a sudden, the door opens up. I see this head. This little figure <laughs> pop out and, and uh, asked me to come on in. And so I'm just thinking to myself, okay, this has got to be like a spring break or renting the house for well, the like weekend a, like or Airbnb something. Or Airbnb, or something. Yeah. yeah, cause that stuff's getting cool nowadays. 
So I was like, okay, this has got to be a whole bunch. I saw a bunch of shoes on the ground. So I was like, all right, this has got to be a party or something like that. And then you take off. I go ahead and set up, and, and the place is beautiful. You remember, of course, the pool table was down there. Yep. Beautiful yep. view. When I sold that place, I gave them the pool table. I got a new oh, one, yeah. by the way. Did Bro, you see I, it? Of course, man. I you got to come by. You got to come by. We got to oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. 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 The, the, uh, the top looks incredible. Yeah, it's right? got that Simonis blue cloth. Yeah, uh, that cloth. It's a diamond pro-am. Those are like, those are the same tables you see on uh, like ESPN when they do tournaments and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're super awesome. I love them. Yeah. Real deal. Yeah. So you got to come yeah. over. But yeah. Oh, for sure. But yeah, so you walk in. Walk in, yep, see all this fancy stuff everywhere, and uh, you take off. And so the whole time I'm just, I'm literally, I don't think in any way that you own it, you know, in yeah, any way. I got you know? that a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, all right, well, this is going to be cool. We're just going to be chilling, you know, like the whole I met a celebrity feeling is kind of gone at that point because I'm just like, you know, they just Airbnb. So we get talking, and um, at some point in time, you like make a mention of selling the place. So immediately all those thoughts came back. I was wow. like, okay, so now, so wait, so you own, he owns this. Who is this guy? What is this? What is this? And that, and then you were like, uh, you speak on stage and you you work on the internet and stuff like that. And yeah, kind of I remember. I remember you 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 perked up and you started asking me questions when I happened to mention that. Well, yeah, I had to find out who you were. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I was like, wait a second, what is this? And the thing is, I didn't want to like take away from your session because I was like, let me go ahead and help this person out. But at the same time, who is this person? You know what I mean? And it's kind of like a situation, you know, you, you may meet someone that is in a higher profession or something, someone yeah. that you're looking up to. And you're just like, I would love to ask this person questions and this and that. But at the same time, that's not why I'm here. You know, I don't want to seem pushy and all right. this and that. You know, what's funny in that neighborhood, most of the people that lived in there, they weren't celebrities. They were doctors. Um, mm -hmm. I swear mm -hmm. to God, every, every one of my neighbors when I lived there was some sort of doctor or they owned uh, there was actually a billionaire that lived there. He owned a, he, he had a portfolio of something crazy, like 900 primary care uh, practices. Mm. He wasn't a doctor. He just, just owned, owned yeah, he had just built up to like 900 locations for wow. primary, and he sold that for, he sold the whole portfolio of those primary care practices for a billion dollars. It was like 980 million or something like that. And he was old as dirt. Like the guy, every time I met him or saw him at like a function at the clubhouse or something, I thought he was going to disintegrate in front of me. But, right there, yeah. you know, but he was a super nice guy. And um, when I met him, I remember asking, trying to ask him some questions and stuff because I felt the same way as you. Like this right. dude's like a billionaire. Like he, he looks at everybody probably, you know, just like you know, whether you're a millionaire or you're broke, you're like the same, you <laughs> not know, even like, close, not right. even, it's not even in the ballpark. So <laughs> I remember trying to ask him some questions, but, yeah. um, but yeah, and believe it or not, there was like hardly any celebrities in there. And I wouldn't absolutely not consider myself a celebrity. This is like quasi internet celebrity, like not real, like, like, you know, um, vegan celebrity, you know, like, <laughs> like the, 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 like not real dairy, you know, right. but, uh, um, well, I still had an idea of something though. Cause I knew when you said on stage and YouTube and internet, I just was yeah. thinking, it's like, well, this is where everything is headed. So I know True. that there's an opportunity. You probably have some incredible engagement or something, you know, or you're out here figuring out something else, how to make the money. It I was, usually just tell something. people I'm a drug dealer and I just watch them Bro, squirm. <laughs> it was, it was either that or something. I was like, whatever you're doing is working. <laughs> you know, I so. say either drug dealer or porn star, but the porn star one doesn't work because I don't think they make that much money. <laughs> no, bro, they, it's, it's, it's way different, way different. <laughs> oh, you know something about that. <laughs> Man, I wouldn't share it if I did. <laughs> I would Google you, but then I was like, wait a minute, I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Dude, I don't even know. I, from, as far as I know, ain't nothing up there, man. <laughs> as far as you know? Well, that's not, that's not good. <laughs> um, anyway, go ahead. I mean, it, it was really just, it was cool just kind of getting to see kind of how, just hear you talk, you know, you were sharing. And the thing is, you didn't really kind of go into sales or anything like that. It wasn't a, it was just kind of sharing who you were. We talked about your jujitsu. We talked about some of your training as well. We talked about your flexibility, just kind of in reality, the normal stuff that I talk about, Yeah. you know, and um, I think you had mentioned or asked or something. I think you were just like, uh, dude, there's no way. You're, you're like, you're too good to be working on a massage app or yeah, something th like that. Yeah, that's true because you when know? I've, I've ordered, like I have a, like memberships to massage places where you go every month, but I also, if I'm in a pinch, <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> ding, um, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I will order it off one of those apps. Um, and you know, generally you get somebody and whether it's the app or you go to one of those like 
massage corporate massage places it's, yeah, it's yeah. okay it's like you know yeah um right. but it's it's like one step above like a you know asian massage parlor you know but right. <laughs> well, dude, I've always not that i would know anything about that right and i always flipped the table on that, you that, right, that, right, right i just read that on reddit it <laughs> you know but uh uh so they um they're generally not that good and you were like really good like you were like it, it wasn't even like a massage it was like some sort of like sports therapy shit you know right. and that's why i had to ask because i was like there's no way like what, what's going on here you know right. um but yeah you you were it, it, you don't do massage anymore but absolutely the best ever like it, it like it you you have this way of like just correcting things you know right. it's like better than chiropractic you know, right. getting going to a chiropractor it's ridiculous but anyway um so so yeah i did ask you i asked you why the hell you were on that yeah. app yeah and, and that really kind of i think that's what kind of started that conversation heading that way because i kind of shared how what i was doing in maryland had multiple practices up there personal training massage doing a bunch of rehab work as well nutrition work too and how i had to just kind of move everything and and figure out what i was going to do once we had all the shutdowns and then when i came down to uh, to florida the goal was how can i network with as many people as possible so I joined on the apps, a couple different apps for personal trainers and mm -hmm. for massage therapists. I joined into, I think I had eight gym memberships and every day I would go to a different gym and just talk to people while I was working out. So in my mind, it made it seem like I was a regular at every single place. And so it just, within a couple months, I just knew so many people just from simple yeah, networking. Yeah, you, 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 yeah. I remember you telling me that you would go to gyms, yeah. work out, make friends with people. And next thing you know, you had all these personal training clients. You weren't really pitching. They, they, right. You were just walking in there and they were like, hey man, like how do you right. get checked? You know? Yeah. Not one pitch. Yeah. It was, brill uh, brilliant marketing. Thank you, man. Thank you. And, and where we're training now, you know, I have toned it down big time, but still I can't even help just to have simple conversations, you know, cause I'm just right. so used to it. It's like, I kind of have a system on like a couple days worth of speaking to somebody I know will be buddy, buddy, you know, right. like I'm never yeah. trying to rush anything or anything like that. But if I find someone who has like that shield up, but they give a little bit of a sign that they might be open to talking or like, you know, whatever, if I see anything, then they're going to get a couple head nods, a couple what's up for yeah. a couple days, you know, and then eventually it's just going to be, Hey, what's up, man? What are you hitting today? And that's you know? a good networking lesson, especially if you're like, if you're listening to this and you're a personal trainer, that's a good networking lesson. Absolutely. I, mean, I know when we work out, I, I try to not talk to anybody. Like you, you're the you're the social butterfly, and I'm just like I don't talk to anybody. <laughs> but um, uh, so so you yeah, we started talking about we were doing the massage, and we started talking about um, all that, and I was commenting on how good you were, and I this is my thing, man. When I when I write, like it's like let, let's be honest, most people suck at what they do. Let's just be, let's just call Nowadays, out the elephant right. in the room. They suck at what they do. So when I come across somebody who is really good at what they do and they're working some job that to me is like, cause I know so many people who have made a lot of money, even millions who are not that talented, you know, the age of the internet and all that, it's, it's not that difficult to become a millionaire these days. So when I meet somebody who's not, and they're like 10 times more talented than a lot of people I know that are, I get this weird sort of like, I don't know, like it, it, it kind of pisses me off, you know? And I, I have to like tell that person like, dude, you know, right. you, you could be doing a lot better. I feel like it's my duty to do that. Um, right. So I mentioned that to you and I think that's how the whole thing started. Yeah, no, it, it was wild when you mentioned it. You were like, I help people, you just kind of kind of gave me a little bit on how you help people create their courses and basically monetize their knowledge. Yeah, and, online business and all that, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's like, it's crazy because when they shut us down up in Maryland on a Friday, I had my business online on a Monday, on that Monday, the next day, or the next couple of days. So, you know, I, I went online, I was looking like, so what are people doing to get their people on? What programs are people using? I did all the research and the good thing, the, the best part about it is I had people that wanted to do it right away. Like yeah. I had a huge group of people that were just like, we don't want to stop. Like, is there anything that you can do to put together for us? So there was the need. So I needed to create something to fill that. And so put together my program, started teaching on Zoom and such, and like just trying to figure it all out, figuring out camera, figuring out audio, all that stuff. It just took a while. 
And like, as we've talked about many times, yeah, I mean, it's pain, um, in the, pain in the ass getting all this stuff to work, you know? I mean, but I'm telling like I said, this is amazing. Like you guys did a great job, but also at the same time, I've never seen anything like it. Like I'm like, it's, it sounds incredible. It's just, it took us a while to build it. Great it's great motivation. It's, yeah. It's uh, it's, I do have a little bit of an advantage. I went to school for audio engineering, so that helps, but, yeah. uh, but you know, it's all Google, Google, whatever. Right. <laughs> oh, that's the thing. I yeah. looked up videos and such and. When you had said that, it just, I was like, okay, like all the events that got me here tonight happened for a reason because mm. I had spent the last year and a half recording all my classes, writing them all down in spreadsheets, figuring out my progressions and just, and doing it because I was naturally doing it anyway. So I just figured I'll eventually use this material because going online gave me an idea. I had a client who was always talking about, you got to figure out how to scale yourself. And for a while I had no idea even what that really meant. And so I thought to myself, like, how am I going to scale individual one-on-one -on -one, hour by hour right. coaching? I only have 24 hours in a day. And so, and I should be sleeping, right? And so, especially for generally. our recovery. Right, generally. So I had to figure out something else. So I knew eventually I was this whole massive collection I had of all these group workouts, at home stuff, all this different stuff I was doing. I had it all. So I had to figure out how do I package it? You know, how do I create videos that people can follow? How do I create a very easy system for people to just click and watch, click and watch or, or whatever. So I hadn't really thought deep into this. When I first came to Florida, my, my, my mind was thinking business, business, I got to fill yeah. up my schedule. So I realized, I didn't realize it quickly, but I eventually realized I was setting up the same thing I had in Maryland, which I actually wasn't necessarily that happy for. You know, I was very busy, had great income, but had no personal life. And I was also traveling from gym to gym, session to session, therapist, going to people's homes. I was doing so much. I was all over the place. The challenge with that is no free time, no social life, you know, struggling with just trying to enjoy myself. So when I eventually did leave, my goal was I need to find a way so I can enjoy the time when I'm not working. Right. Because what's the you point know? of doing it if you... If you can't ever enjoy your time. Right. And exactly. I think that's when I mentioned to you, um, I, I mentioned to you that you should read my book. And I don't think I, I if I remember, I don't think I had one laying around. Right. And right. Uh, didn't you end up going and buying it after yeah, that session? I, literally, I pulled out, I went out of the last gate and I sat there and I was, because I had already had it on my phone. I looked okay. it up when you like, when I was putting stuff away. And so I just went ahead and ordered it. And then it had the little, get the audio book as well. And I just happened to click that too just because I was just thinking about it. So I, I started playing it on the way home. It was probably about 30 oh, minutes. Oh, wow, man, home. you went right into it. Yeah, because uh, I was like, I mean. I didn't even know that. I had the proof <laughs> right oh, in front yeah, of me. Oh, yeah, you walked you into know? A, yeah, the I house. I was like, and, yeah. all right, let's see what he's about. And uh, it was great. It was like, it was exactly what I needed to read because it was like that next step, you know, mm. of like, I don't know what it was that told me to record all this stuff and get all this stuff down in the first place, but that next message from wherever the universe came from that book and it just was like all right so let me go ahead and read this here see if this makes sense for me because we're already he's already speaking you know online he's already figured out how to brand himself how to market and network himself which is something i'm looking to do i can network myself incredibly in person but figuring out how to do it through a computer was a whole different ball game yeah it's a totally different you know? totally different uh world um, you almost right. have to kind of create a character that you play online, you know, right. it's funny. Cause sometimes when I meet people and actually every time I meet people in person, they go, uh, wow. You, first they go, you're way taller than I thought. And then they <laughs> say, uh, you're, you're like a really nice guy. Like I never didn't think you would be that nice. And I, I always say to myself, like, God, am I that much of a dick online? online like, you right, know? Right. <laughs> but, uh, it's good to hear it. I just don't like to type. So I always say things very short and very, it's like a lot of, I, 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 uh, hyperbole because I'm just like, I don't have time to like add in the things to sound nice. I just, here's the answer, you know? Right. <laughs> but, right. uh, so you, you, you waited to get the book. You, you, you did the uh, audio book and yeah. then didn't you, didn't you immediately like take some action? I, I didn't, Absolutely. I didn't talk to you for like what, a month or two. Yeah. It was about a month. It was about a month, maybe a month and a half. And because I'd read your book, I was thinking to myself, maybe this guy's waiting for me to come through with some great sales tactic to get his attention. <laughs> and I was like, what is, why is this dude not answering? You know, but you were moving. You had all that stuff Yeah, going I was on. moving at the time. You, know, you should see my, 
my phone, I have like 250 missed text messages. Bro, and that's per hour. I get, I know, <laughs> right? So, so I, you know, I understood. And the, and the thing was like, when I do connect back with this guy, cause I knew I eventually would, cause I had also looked at, because I was hooked after listening to that and, and, re, and uh, going through the story. So I started looking up some other people in the field and what they were doing in fitness. And so started following a couple of them, getting a couple of ideas. And I realized like, okay, this is the scaling that people are talking about. This is how I can do it. I don't need to sit and do one-on-one -on -one with people. I need right. to create a program that they can now follow on their own and then actually use me for individual coaching calls or like we've done Voxer and stuff like that, learning all that. But the biggest thing I got from the book was going to high ticket. And I had already made a high ticket switch earlier on in my career when I left a lot of the gyms I was working when I went to online. I started charging, basically charging the same, but since I wasn't having to pay out the gym, I was, I gave myself a little raise. So it gave me a little bit of time. I didn't have to stress as much to find. And then amazing how, when you have your own business, you can give yourself a raise. It's exactly. like, it's like the biggest, yeah. like, I've always trip. said that, man, always yeah. said that. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and so side note, it's been six years now I've been working for myself and I've always thought that if I was ever tight, it was just like, okay, let's hustle a little bit more and let's go ahead and get that raise. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I knew I could do it myself. So you, you, didn't you implement that? You started a program. I didn't even talk to you for like a month, month and a half. And then when I reconnected with you, um, you had already had your program like up and running. Right. And, uh, you, you were doing pretty well with it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I took the people I was already working with and just basically all that information I had, I turned it into a course and it was, it included everything. And since a lot of these people were already working with me as I was doing the classes and such, I was letting them know I was, I was building the excitement. Like, Hey, I'm working on this new course. You're all going to have access to it. It's a portal you can click into on demand videos, 24 seven. I was just like building it up every single class. And as soon as I rolled it out, you know, and the crazy, I actually rolled it out a week early because mm -hmm. I got into some financial stress and I was talking to my brother and, uh, I was like, dude, man, like I, I'm trying to get this course. I got to do this. I got to pay this. You know, I went through a lot of dental stuff. So like if anyone's been through dental pain, you want to take care of that as fast yeah. as possible. So, uh, I, I went ahead and, and went with the high ticket and I was like, you know what? It's not hundred percent ready, but there was something in that book about selling the course before you finish it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, well, let me just give it a shot. And so I wrote up an email, sent the message out and eight people bought right away. And then five more people bought after that. So how much did you make all together? It totaled eight thousand dollars. So you 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 <laughs> left my house and left the house. read the book. <laughs> I connected to you like a month, month and a half later, and you'd made eight grand. That's that's yeah. awesome. That and you know yeah. what? That's that's some that's some serious action taking. And you know what? When you told me that, I, that's that's when I knew that you were like you were you were very different than most people. You were somebody that that takes a lot of action, and that's very rare. Um, and then we, you know, we connected and we made this agreement that I would sort of help you out and you'd train me and we'd barter like that. Right. And, uh, since then we've, we've adjusted, uh, we've created, had you create sort of a different program that's more high touch, um, right. a little bit more expensive, but you, you work very closely with people and that program has done really well. You're getting a lot of results for your right. people. Like you're getting crazy results and you, you know, you create nutrition plan for them, all cost, you know, um, all that stuff. So it's, uh, th that's awesome. So l l let's dive into some, some stuff about like nutrition and, uh, and working out. Uh, one of the things that I noticed right away when we started working out together was that let's say I was working on, um, I don't know, like back, right. Mm -hmm. You had me do a bunch of bicep work to just exhaust the biceps so that they could not help when I was doing back. And right. I thought that was like really interesting because it makes sense, right? Like if you're doing back and you're another muscle, like your biceps are helping, well, then you're not really fully getting the back workout in. So if you, right. you know, you, you kill those muscles and then you work, you work that out, you know, can you go in, into that a little bit and explain how that all works? Yeah, absolutely. It's all breaking down compound lifts. So when we work out, we think about compound movements and then isolated movements course, a compound movement would be like back. And anytime that you're pulling something, you're using your lats and you're using your biceps, some more muscles in your back, the rhomboids and the post delts. So all of those muscles are working together, which means that um, circle of focus is going to be split all over the place between those muscles. 
However, if you're noticing that, okay, when I do pull day, I'm noticing that I'm not getting as much full engagement in my back. So there could be a situation with that neural pathway. Neural pathways are the brain muscle connection. And so if that connection is not 100% and worked on all the time, obviously your brain's going to kind of be doing multiple things at the same time. Mm. So what we do is we isolate those muscles that are overworking. And many times in a pull action, depending on people's form, depending on how well they can control their shoulders, a lot of times the biceps and shoulders will be doing more work than the lats themselves will be doing. Could this be a reason why some people may work out, maybe they, they do a lot of back work and their back never grows or really any other type of workout. You, you know, you do a lot of whatever work and that muscle just, you're not just, you're just not gaining gaining any muscle there, even though you do it right. all the time. Is that kind of one of the reasons why that would happen? It gets towards it. You know, it's, I think the two main reasons are form, you know, making sure that you're engaging the proper muscles and then that neuromuscular connection, that whole mind muscle thing. And it's, it's really true. It's like, if, you know, if you're just kind of going through the motions and not really focusing on the muscle, you're not going to get as good of a benefit as if your mind, your brain was really there for each bicep curl. And that importance is just the same when doing a simple lap pull down or a simple squat. A good example, let's say, you know, that you, you sit a whole lot. When you do those squats, you're going to be kind of, when you do that squat, you're going to mimic the form of when you're sitting in that chair, because certain muscles are going to be tight. Certain muscles are going to be weak. For most of us that sit, our hip flexors get really tight because they're shortened up and then we're sitting on these glutes. So they become cushions. And the problem with that is you need the glutes to work in a squat and you need those hip flexors to, in a way, pull you down into the squat. So if those are two areas like the hip flexors don't have their length that they need and the glutes don't have their strength, neither of them can truly work in that squat, which means the only other muscle that's going to do all the work is those quadriceps. So whenever you hear someone say a quadricep dominant squat, it means the quads are doing more work. And so in that case, I would need to make sure that the quads are exhausted. I would then need to make sure that the glutes are activated and that the hip flexors are stretched out. So this is why we do like a lot, a lot of quad work before we do squats. In your situation, right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. We always activate the glutes with the resistance band work and it's never meant to be a lot. It's really just meant to get that mind muscle connection going. Because once you stimulate that, then you have a better chance of having that strong path when you're in the actual squat. Mm. So right. if you if you've done a lot of squats and you still don't have a nice ass, it could be because <laughs> you're working them quads too much, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's uh, they should be balanced, you know. But there are quad dominant squats and there are glute dominant squats, and there are hamstring. When your hamstrings are too tight, that's going to affect your squat as well. So if we're just talking about squat, you can think about every other move in the gym that has to do with multiple muscles any compound movement is likely going to have some sort of imbalance, whether it be from the front of the body to the back of the body or the right to the left. Mm. A lot of times you think, oh, my right arm is stronger than my left or something like that. Yeah, I noticed that you when know? we do uh, leg extensions, you never, ever have me do two. Actually, explain this real quick. This <laughs> is something a lot of people don't know. I heard you talking to a guy yeah. in the gym the other day yeah. why you never, ever should do uh, dual leg leg extensions. You always do them one-legged. Can you right. explain why that is? Absolutely. So the never ever only comes in play to the machines where the attachment is only on one side. Old school back in the day, if anyone can think of a leg extension, you're sitting in a chair and you put the bar under on top of your shins and you're kicking those legs out. Back in the day, the attachment used to be right in the center. So when you were doing it, it was like a cable that went underneath of your seat, basically. So you were guaranteed to be hitting both the same. However, with these new machines, it's like a pad. It's one bar and it's only attached on the right side, the side closest to all the weights and such. Over time, that side will stay fixed and this other side will slightly go forward because mm -hmm. there's nothing really holding it there. No matter how strong that metal is, you have people hitting that thing every day, eventually something's gonna happen. And so what happens is the side that's closest to the attachment is gonna work harder and the side that is slightly angled out is not gonna work as hard. And it's a very small thing. You probably really can't feel it unless you really have that mind muscle connection. And I remember you, you, you met this guy, we, right. we were working out and he was like, why is my left quad bigger than my right quad? Why is so switch swap? Yeah. He yeah. had his right was way bigger and he, yeah. had, he had better activation with his mind to the right side. Cause I was teaching him how to pose and he could do everything he needed. He could get the muscles to pop on only the right side. 
but the left side was just, it almost looked like he hadn't even been working it. And the crazy thing, after we did a little bit for that day, by the end of the day, he actually was starting to activate certain muscles in there. So it's again, it proved to me real quick, it's like mind muscle connection can be grown in minutes if you know what you're doing. But yeah, his situation, he was like, I always do them both legs at the same time. You know, and I was like, if, if you just go out there and hold both and just look at them, there's a good chance that the side that's not fixed is going to be slightly angled. And it wasn't, an, and it really was when I saw a machine, some random place I went to, and it was a dramatic difference. Like it was a yeah. real big angle. And ever since then I've used it and, um, you know, brand new machines, you're probably not going to deal with it as much, but I really like the idea of isolating one leg at a time. Not only are we making sure that both legs are getting a taste of that weight themselves, but that mind muscle connection, you know, in bodybuilding, we have to be, if some, if my coach says to me, all right, you're not flexing your left quad. I need to know how to keep everything else flexed, but then somehow send a message to that left quad to flex. So the, 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 the thing we should take away from this is when you're doing uh, a leg workout on like, let's say just, uh, you know, quad, or, or I would imagine the same thing uh, applies to a hamstring curl machine right. is yeah. always do it with one leg because you know, obviously lower the weight one leg and then switch to the other, because now you're getting the full workout on that leg. Right. And when you, and, and it's balanced. And when you do with both, you're having an imbalance. One is working harder than the other always. And over time you'll develop, you know, a different looking uh, set of muscles and a different size set of muscles on one side. And you'll have this imbalance in your legs. Right. Right. Wow. See that's, see, that's some crazy stuff that people don't think <laughs> about. They yeah. don't like, and, and and these machines, they probably get imbalanced after what a few weeks. Exactly, People you know, smashing them all the time. Yeah, you're right. That's that's nuts, man. Like like nobody thinks about that, right? Like there's right. little small reality things that nobody thinks about, and they're like, why is this? You know, they'll go and they'll try to solve it with all these different types of uh, uh, exercises, and it just comes down to something so so simple as well. The machines are imbalanced because that's just how they are, and right. you just do it one leg and you'll be fine. You know, so that's um. Cause I, I've never been able to get my legs to grow, but when, but, but since we've been doing this stuff with you, like my legs have grown and they're starting to fill out Absolutely. and they're, I'm, they're starting to not look like chicken legs. So, that's right. you know, and that's a huge <laughs> thing is like, sometimes people will say, you know, they'll see somebody who's got a decent upper body and they have these skinny <laughs> legs and they'll say, oh, he's got chicken legs, but they are working out their legs. They just, maybe they don't know the best possible way to do it. Right. And uh, since we've been doing it, it, especially those those things that you do where you do the half or the quarter, the quarter squats right. at the bottom, the quarters, or like when we do leg press, right? You'll have me do a little teeny tiny movements at the bottom, little teeny tiny movements at the top, and then the full length. Right. And that's brutal. Like that's, <laughs> right. that ends up being super brutal, but it's, it's made my legs grow like crazy. Um, it's happening into the whole thing. You yeah. know, it's, uh, it's, I like to think about it, origins and insertions. Every muscle has an origin and it also then inserts somewhere, two different places where it attaches to bone. And normally they're two different bones because when that muscle contracts, it brings those bones closer together. So mm -hmm. rather than just work in the middle, the belly of the muscle, my goal is to work the belly of the muscle, but then also work the fibers that get us closer to that origin. And then also the fibers that get us closer to that insertion. So we're treating the whole muscle. And this is why I speak to everyone on flexibility, because when you're not stretching, your muscle doesn't get to its optimal length. So you may, may be able to pump up a muscle and build a muscle, but if it's not at its optimal length and it's not at its most be the best free range of motion, in no way are you really going to be able to train it to its maximum. So yeah. that's why we speak on the multiple different types of flexibility. But there, you know, back in the day, many bodybuilders didn't stretch, but there also were the pros that hit the stage and they did. And so we, and it, for some reason, it didn't just carry on through life. I think it's just because people are busy. You know, we want to get in, get our workout out and go, but we don't think about what tight muscles can eventually do. Well, the workouts that we do, I don't think you could get through them without stretching. Right. I mean, there's just right. no way. And, and not even stretching, but the foam rolling. Like that, like how much is one of those foam rollers? What, 10, now, 20 bucks? Nowadays, yeah, nothing. They're 10 bucks. Yeah, yeah they're like 10 bucks. And nobody uses them, you know? Right. Um, but rolling just, just 10 minutes of rolling. I mean, I know of them because we use them a lot in jujitsu and, right. and that's right. a common thing in jujitsu. But if you don't do like wrestling or jujitsu, you don't, you don't really see them a lot. 
and you don't right. see them used a lot. And they're incredible for recovery because you just basically sit on them and you roll right. back and forth and it just works your muscle out. And it's, it's amazing for, for recoveries. And that's right. a, like, just that right there is something that a lot of people just don't do. And they say, well, it's sort of like business, you know, people, well, I'm working on my business, but it's not growing. And then you look at their business and it's <laughs> like, shit, like they, they don't, I remember one time, um, I met this person at a conference. I told this story on another episode, but I met this person at a conference and they said, uh, I had this language, they have a language company where they teach like Italian and all this. And they were complaining that they tried everything, keyword everything, mm -hmm. and they couldn't get it to grow. Right. And I said, well, what about, you know, he's like, there's just not that much money in it. And I'm like, what about like Rosetta Stone and Hooked on Phonics? And right. he's like, oh, those companies are terrible because this and that and mine's better. I'm like, well, if yours is better, how come you're not doing better? You know? And he's like, well, you know, excuse, excuse. And I said, well, uh, let me ask you a question. Who owns Hooked on Phonics? Who founded it? Oh, I don't know. So wait, your number one competitor, you don't even know who founded the company. You don't even know the origin story of how they got started. And you've tried everything to grow your business. Bullshit. Right. You haven't even researched your competitors at all. That's like phase one. Like you, you can't right. tell me that you've tried it. So a lot of times when people say, well, I've tried everything working out. No, you haven't. <laughs> like, right. no, you have not lies, complete right. lies, you know? So, so a lot of times people get discouraged, I think with working out cause they, cause they feel like they've tried everything, mm -hmm. but in reality, f feeling, f feeling in reality, they don't, they don't generally exist right. in the same space, you know? Right. Um, so, and I, I learned that a lot when I started working out with you because there's just like so much. And how did you, how did you freaking learn all this? Like to go from skinny, you know, <laughs> caveman over here to, to like <laughs> jacked bodybuilder in three years, how did you, and all these things, you know, about the machines and the, and the exhausting, the muscle, like, how did you learn all that? Like, where did that come right. from? Well, my first part of the career was not about me. It was not about building my muscle. So I spent all my time learning this stuff, how to do it for other people. So I started out in fitness and there was a physical therapy space in the gym I was working at. So I started an internship there and just started soaking up the information from them. And that's everything I was learning. I was realizing was like, wow, so many people are spending time building, but how many people really understand the recovery? And so when I started doing that internship, they were, they would have me on like a wheeling chair and I would wheel myself between four or five people all the time, you know, working at the same time. And I realized, and as I was working with these people, I would ask them the questions of what they're doing to fix their shoulder or fix their knee or whatever. And it was always responses only talking about the joint at question. It wasn't, they weren't in any way thinking about anything else. And so I was like, mm -hmm. okay, so what are you doing for your cardiovascular? How are you helping get those nutrients through your body by boosting your circulation? Or are you doing anything for that? Or what about your flexibility in your shoulders? Cause you know, I know you're talking about your lower back, but have you thought about what's going on in your neck? And it's, it was more of a holistic approach. And that's just something that I noticed that we didn't really tap into because we were, uh, we were stuck to a list that was covered by insurance. Right. And I yeah. was looking at these people as a whole item. And so the rehab turned into massage therapy, which then of course, so many people were coming in. I was working with trainers and I would send my clients to them two months later, they'd come back and I would still feel or see the imbalance. And so I would then reach out to the trainer and be like, Hey, you know, just want to check in, you know, you know, remember the goal was to do this, this, and this. And every time I did it, it was, it felt like I was criticizing people because they always came back with a defensive response. And I was like, I'm not, my goal is not to make you feel like you don't know what you're doing. You know, my goal is to try to figure out how we both can help this person. And so after having multiple situations where it was just frustrating and people thinking I was trying to take clients and, and this and, and, and uh, hit them with slander or something like Scarcity that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. So I just was like, you know what, I'm just going to do it myself. And so the gym I had was actually hosting a certification. And so I took that certification and, um, then probably about three months later took another one, but then I started working for that one because when I, it was a weekend certification and I was just offering all sorts of information while they were, they were like, raise your hand if you got this. And I just was doing so much. So at the end of the class, the teacher came up to me and he was like, Hey man, you know, if, if you're interested in teaching something like this, we're looking for instructors. And so this program flew me all over the country to teach these certifications. And it was a basic personal training cert, but what it gave me was the opportunity to speak to 40 to 50 people at a time, every time. 
And what happened there was I got questioned. I mean, some people were brand new in the industry. Some people had been in the industry for 40 years and just needed to recertify. So that's why they were there. So I started having back and forth with all different types of people of the industry. And so I started being able to practice the information I was studying as well, hearing what they were he studying, hearing from old school bodybuilders what worked and what doesn't work now, and hearing from new school bodybuilders what works now and what would have never worked back then, and just started kind of putting it all together. And then with the power of online, I was able to take tons of certifications, and especially when you know things were getting tough financially, and I needed to be able to figure out, okay, what is something that I can add to my service now to make it better for my clients? So that's where I was just compounding certifications. And originally I thought it was like, we well, got to go to college to get all this stuff. And I, you know, I went, I think I had three semesters in college mm. and somebody was like, just go to this trade school and learn that it was like, uh, it was like the ligaments of the knee or something like that was the first so you just thing. went you went deep on all this stuff you you went, went deep it. on and you had access to people old and new right. from the bodybuilding industry and you just you just went deeper than most people go basically soaked it all up oh yeah. wow so and i always figured i could you know there's tons of people in the industry just like there's tons of internet marketers you know i was like so how am i going to stand out you know everyone was afraid of now, the thing I was hearing, because my certification was a two-day cert and people were getting certified, the main objection I was hearing from people was, well, I don't want a trainer that was certified in two days. And so I would say to them, well, I wouldn't either. You know, but you got to do your homework to make sure that the person has their information. And these people coming out of this industry, or to start coming out of the certification, some of them were on two days of training. Not all of them, because remember, a lot of the people were coming in to recertify, but some of them were brand spanking new. And I was talking to some of them and they had online followings, like you were talking about 50,000 people following, 100,000 people following them. And they can't even answer some of the most basic fundamental questions I was asking in that course. And so I thought to myself, I was like, okay, so our industry is about to be flooded with these people that I just haven't taken the responsibility to learn everything. So I was like, so how, and I used to speak this in my classes while I was teaching myself, you know, I was like, if I'm going to stay on top, I have to be on top of my knowledge because the more people that come in, what's going to happen to our industry is people are going to start losing faith in personal trainers because they're going to start to realize like they used to know a lot, but now they're just getting certified online in three hours. So they don't know much at all. So it starts to really hit that credibility when, mm -hmm. when in reality, personal trainers and people who are into health are the ones that can really save a lot of people from having to go down that path of, surgeries and medications and a life of hospitalization just by simply making some proper decisions now. So I started to realize it was like, we can really impact people, but at the same time we could hurt our credibility big time. So for me, it was like, rather than thinking about the credibility of everyone, I just need to make sure that I'm the absolute best that I can be. So the questions that come about, I have an answer right away. And if I don't have the answer, I have the resource to get mm. the answer. So my thought was, you know, welcome all these people into the industry, but the less that they take, the less time they take to practice and get knowledgeable and understand the system, the less that they do, the better it's going to make me look. Cause in no way am I going to stop. You know, it's kind of like when the students like telling the teacher, I'm going to catch you. And the teacher's like, well, good luck. Cause I'm not stopping. By the time you get to where I'm at, I'm going to be even further up. So keep on yeah, climbing. That's a super strong mindset as well to have around that. Let, let me oh, ask you yeah. what, what, um, so I understand how this all transpired as a trainer, as getting knowledge, but what, what inspired you to go, like when you were skinny like that, what inspired you to try to put on that much muscle and become a bodybuilder? Mm. Well, I was challenged to do a show. A buddy of mine, a good friend of mine did a show and I was a, at the gym we both worked at. I was a trainer, I was a massage therapist and I was leading the whole entire, one of the companies actually in sales. So you know, this guy that I was hanging out with, he was like kind of coming up underneath me. The goal was to just kind of, I was sharing as much as I could with him and we were hanging out all the time, but it was really just like a student. And he, w I went to his show with him. I did a lot of his, a lot of bodybuilders. I do used to do their therapy for those shows. So I would do sessions, massage sessions beforehand, backstage, and then afterwards, all different types of sessions, but to help them perform better. And the one before stage was actually to help make things look better. And so I went to a show, of course, and right as we got, if we got to the stage, he was like, I challenge you to do this. The next show's in four months, hmm. four months. And I was looking at the people on stage and I was like, 
And so in my mind, I'm thinking, I mean, four, four months, I think I, at one point I was like, you know, I, I might be able to win my class, you know, the novice class. And then I remember sitting there watching the rest of the show and looking at these people that were up on stage, but I'd already said, all right, I'll do it. I'm not scared. No worries. You know yeah. how you just automatically say, yeah, sure. No problem. Not even thinking about it. And I remember going home and thinking like, okay, well, I said, I'm going to do it. You know, this is technically my student and real good friend at the time. You know, it was just like, why not? He's going to do one as well. So I decided just to jump on and just started training. And really for me, what it was, was, you know, I knew how to train. I knew how to keep my body healthy, make sure my joints were strong, but I didn't quite understand the mass part putting on mass. So I started really studying bodybuilding and basically how everything is metabolized. And once I started understanding calories and fuel and how the metabolism works, it just made sense for me. I was like, oh, okay. So, cause I do so much movement, I have a really high metabolism. So that means I'm going to have to eat a ton of food. So for me, the biggest challenge, it wasn't the training. Cause I've already said it wasn't any of that stuff. It was figuring out the food for me, mm. you know, constantly running around teaching classes, doing massage, doing one-on-one -on -one trainings and working out myself and doing my cardio. I remember for the first, for probably those four months, I slept like three to four hours a night, which I would never recommend for anyone trying to build muscle because you really need the recovery. At that point in time though, I was so focused on getting it all done that I didn't even care. I had blinders on, yeah. you know, I was just like, okay. Um, I was working all day and I couldn't get to the workout till 10 and I have to get up at 5.30, but my workout's gonna be sometimes an hour and a half long. So many times I'd be getting home 11.30 to 12 and then you gotta cool down. So I was getting to sleep between that one, two, two thirty right. in the morning and having to get right back up. Wow. You know, so I don't even really remember too much about those four months. It was just like, I gotta get on this stage. And I remember about a month out, I went to a friend at a nutrition shop and I told him I was doing the show. He was like, well, let me see your abs. So I pulled up, showed him my abs. He was like, bro, you're not even close. You got four weeks. What are you doing? Like, you, there's no way. And I was like, <laughs> like, I wasn't gonna quit, but I was like, okay, so what do I gotta do? So he's like, you have to go on probably the strictest diet anyone has had to do. You have to cut this. You have to go from 15% down to under five in the next four weeks. And I was like, all right, so what do I have to do? So he gave me the most basic cookie cutter thing. He was like, look, at this point, it just has to be the extreme of the extreme in order for you to do it. You're going to lose muscle by cutting this fast, but you know, you'll at least look like you were supposed to be there. Like you planned the show was that weekend. Nowadays, many people go onto the stage and you're wondering what they're even doing there. Yeah. You know? Well, let me ask you this, because there's a lot of arguments and debates that go into diet. And I think you know, people say, oh, you, you can eat carbs, you can't eat carbs, you can do this, you can do that, you can't do this, you know, and I think that what people forget is that you have to have the context in what you're talking about. If somebody is right. 50 pounds overweight and they need to lose 20 pounds, 30, 40 pounds, that's a much different situation than you want to get ripped, you right. know, it's a different thing. And I always say, Cause you know, I know, I know some professional fighters and, and professional like jujitsu players and stuff and people that have to cut weight. And it's funny because those people that I know when they cut weight, they do all the things that everybody, all, all the, all the chunky people say don't work. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the whole, like, like when, when, when you gave me my diet, I was like, man, this is all the stuff people say do doesn't work. But mm -hmm. when I did it, it worked super fast. I mean, you remember that when we did that four week cut, I mean, right. it just fell off me. Right. And I always think if you got a lot of weight to lose, right? Or maybe not even if you just have a whole lot, but imagine if you just even scratch the surface on what people do that are professionals, you know, the results you would get would be, it would be amazing. I, I remember the first time I cut weight for a jujitsu competition, Brandon actually um, helped me do it. And he gave me a diet that was, you know, somewhat similar to yours and the whole water cut thing and all that. And, um, that was brutal, but you know, mm -hmm. all the people that say, oh, you know, you can do this and you can do that and you can eat all the fat you want and all the carbs you want. I'm like, okay, well then why aren't you ripped? You know, like, <laughs> like, I mean, it's a simple thing, you know? And, uh, uh, so can you, can you talk about like some of the misconceptions when it comes to diet and also touch on, 
your the the aspect of meal timing because when you introduce me to you know mm. some people say oh you don't have to eat five six times a day or oh you can eat one meal a day and all this and that and I understand that if you have lo- less calories than you take in and all that you will lose weight but when you're really trying to get the most out of everything save the muscle build muscle while at the same time leaning out or if you're trying to preserve muscle and 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 lose weight can you go into some of the biggest misconceptions with that and also why meal timing is so important right yeah absolutely i think the biggest misconception is that when you're trying to lose weight is to stop eating and to limit the amount of food that you're eating because yes there's a difference between surplus and deficit surplus meaning you're eating an extra amount of calories and you should be having deficit meaning less However, a lot of people, when they think, all right, I'm going to get into a situation, I'm going to lose a bunch of weight. They think, okay, I'm just not going to eat all morning. I'm going to do some type of intermittent something. And then there, it, it, the thing is, if you do follow something like that, you have to understand why. And if there's not a good reason why, then there's no reason that you should be doing it. So if you're in a place where you're like, okay, I want to lose a lot of weight, I'm going to stop eating. The question then is why? So many people will then say, Well, because I'm overeating and I'm not eating good stuff and and that's why the weight is there. And so the challenge is understanding the difference between fat and lean muscle. So lean muscle has a ton of nutrients. We eat protein to build muscle, right? Mm -hmm. So if we don't give our body that protein, we're actually made up of really good protein. So our body's just going to go ahead and metabolize that. So if we're in a position where we're not filling ourselves up and fueling ourselves to the bare requirements to be able to save lean muscle mass, then we're going to lose it. And so the challenge is if you're then trying to lose fat, fat is not just going to disappear right away. Fat is, there's nothing in it. So your body's going to store it. And so many times we talk about starvation mode. If the body doesn't have the food that it needs, it's going to store the things it doesn't need and take from what it does. So in our bodies, that's take from the muscle and store the fat. Does it burn muscle before it burns fat, the body? It's going to go right after the muscle. Yeah. Wow. And so the, re- the reason is because it's, it's got nutrients in it. It's so good. It's like, what can we use the fat for? Now, a lot of people will say, well, then put yourself into a state where you're only burning fat as energy. And fat is a fuel source. However, if there's any other type of glycogen in the system, your body's going to go with natural and use the glycogen or carb or sugar as its fuel. So that's why people will kind of get the, these new diets mixed up because there's an exorbitant amount of fat a lot of fat, but there isn't necessarily the knowledge on understanding where all the carbs are. Many times carbohydrates can be coming in sauces and such, which mm-hmm. will then put you in a position where you're not only fueling yourself off of fats. Now, of course, these ideas can be wide range for a lot of different people's metabolisms, plus a lot of different goals. But one of the main things we have to do is at least fuel our system to a point where we can maintain our lean muscle mass. Right, because if you're losing weight and on the scale, it says you've lost 10 or 15 pounds, but in reality, you've lost most of that in muscle. And so you weigh less, but you still look just as fat. Right. And in fact, you may even look worse. You might look like a skeleton that somebody slapped some skin on that's just hanging all over the place, you know, because yeah. because you, you have effectively, you know, you have lean muscle and you have fat. And now all you're doing is taking away the lean muscle so that the major- what's more on you is is fat. So yeah, right. you may weigh less, but you actually look worse. Right. You know, from people starving themselves, and that makes a ton of sense. Um, you know, even when I was like in my mid twenties, when I tried to lose weight, I would try to like starve myself, and I would end up basically like losing weight, but I still looked like crap. And I was like, what is going on here? So right. that that definitely um, that definitely explains that. Do you do you think that? Um, or can you can you touch on meal timing? Yeah, you know, yeah. like like why is it so important to eat at certain times, and what does that really do for you? Right. So the first thing is getting in food every two to three hours, and the reason we do that, I like to think of a trying to start a campfire, right? If you if I was to give you all of this fuel, all this wood for you to be able to keep yourself warm all night, would you put all of the wood on the fire right away to get a massive fire, which could burn you? It would be probably pretty hot. Or would you do a little bit of wood at a time every couple hours? Remember, the goal is to stay warm all night, not necessarily get this massive bonfire. Yeah, I mean, I would do it. I would do it every couple hours. And as well, if you just put all the wood on there, the the fire would initially be like hardly any fire at all. It would be like just 
embers and, and, and it would take a while for that to get hot. Whereas if you put a little bit on, it would get hot pretty much right away. Right. It's a good example of a couple holidays coming up where people stuff themselves as much as possible and then everybody wants to lay down and go to sleep afterwards. Right. And it's like, you got to think a lot of the energy that your body spends to be a person and be outward is now being spent breaking down that food. So if it's too much food going in, energy has to be spent breaking it down. Now you could go into absorption rates and how long it takes to break things down and all that stuff. But let's just use that simple analogy thinking about, okay, we need to perform all day long. If I have a massive meal in the beginning of the day, it is likely that I'm going to be spending a lot of time breaking that food down. But then at a certain point in time, blood sugar is going to drop, food's going to be gone and the body's going to crash. And many times the answer to that crash is energy drink, sugar, coffee, something like that. However, what those do is they, they mess with the message to the brain saying, not saying that you're not tired. It's just telling your brain that it's not tired. Right. And I love, you know, I can't remember where I heard that, but I like to use that as much as possible because it's very, it's, it's so true. You know, I, I like to think like, okay, if my body is exhausted, something happened in the nutrition somewhere throughout the day. Maybe I didn't get my, my breakfast in properly, or maybe I had too many carbohydrates and fats in meals that I'm used to just having protein and fibers in. So my body's having to break more stuff down. So the goal of getting food in, in the beginning of the day, of course, is to give you some energy, but then also get your nutrients in. Then as we make our way closer to the workout, we want to start thinking about what's going to fuel us through the workout. So right now we happen to be using glycogen and carbs as our primary fuel source. So the meals in a way build up to that. And then directly after that workout, we need to get some nutrients in as well. So a quick side note on that. I think the two best times to get food in are right when you wake up after basically being fasted all night. And then right after you work out after basically using whatever food that you have. So once food starts going in, you got to think, okay, it may take about 45, 30, 45 minutes to break down. Then I have that food, which may last an hour to two. But if you're trying to build muscle, your system is constantly burning. So at a certain point in time, if the fuel's not put in, the engine's going to crash. And, it, and we're not like a car. You know, you run out of fuel, the car stops. Or, you know, for us, when we run out of fuel, we keep going. The brain keeps us awake because we're like, I got to finish this project. I got to make this call. Mm. So something has to fuel the system that's where the body starts metabolizing itself. And we look at, and we don't even realize it sometimes. You ever like be really hungry and then 30 minutes later, you're just not hungry anymore? Yeah, that's happened before. Not, not recently because of all the lifting. Because what you're doing right do. now, yeah, right? Yeah, but, but it has happened in the past. Right. Yeah. And now, and that's a, that's a good example because now your body is like, we don't have time to miss a meal. You know, like you're constantly training. You're out here doing jujitsu and you're out here training. So you're asking your muscles to get stronger literally every day. So if there isn't fuel going in to make that stronger, then at some point in time, everything's going to break down. And mm -hmm. it happens in a couple different ways in weightlifting where you either get too tired to move on or you start hurting joints because the muscles are injured. So if you're fueling yourself on a daily basis at the same time on a regular basis, your system starts to understand when fuel goes in, when fuel is used, how to use it, and then also how to recover, which is why when you have those cheat days and cheat meals and stuff like that, you feel different. Yeah. You know, like you're loaded and full of food. If you do it properly, the next workout, you'll feel like freaking Superman. But going and taking in that food, it's, it's a shock to the system, especially if you've really been dieting. So it's just important to make sure that whatever's going in is being done on a regular basis. That's why a lot of people will think like bodybuilding is boring and you barely get to eat anything at all. And it's like, no, no, you, you get to choose what you like. You can have great meals, but you're going to have that every day, you yeah, know, yeah. for a while, you know? Well, let me ask you this. For, for somebody who's not necessarily trying to be a bodybuilder, maybe they're just trying to lose weight or they're trying to get in shape and look good and they're not, you know, they're not trying to get on stage or anything, um, especially like entrepreneurs and people who are busy. Uh, right. The two things that really help me, and I know I, know I, can, I can already see the comments for this one, um, oh, yeah. but there's two things that helped me that you showed me. Number one was, um, you know, carb timing, meaning uh, basically the last, so if I, let's say I eat five times a day, right? 
uh, the first three meals would have carbs and the last two meals would have no carbs. Meaning like, I don't mean like carbs that you would find in vegetables. I'm talking about like rice or, or something like that. So basically my last two meals of the day have zero starchy carbs, no rice, no bread, nothing like that. It is literally just lean protein and vegetables. Um, when I started doing that, it was like, you know, I can already hear all the people, no, you, you can eat carbs. Eh? Well, quite, well, great. But when I started doing that, it was like a light switch. I mean, literally like a light switch started falling off me. That, and then uh, fasted cardio, which I know <laughs> there's so many people out there that don't believe in it and that say that it doesn't work. All I know is when I started doing fasted cardio, um, meaning getting up in the morning, doing cardio right before your first meal and then eating, it, it just worked really well. Can you explain for those people out there who don't believe in that, both the fasted cardio and the, the, the no carbs at night? Mm -hmm. um, and I know we do carbs sometimes if like legs day, this is the next morning, I understand there's some exceptions, but for the most part, no carbs at night and uh, fasted cardio, why, why does that work? Right, right. So the first one with the carbs and car we call it carb cycling. And the idea is to start to learn why and how your body uses fuel. So if you're at a point where you're taking in too much, then in that situation, your body's not going to be able to use it in a way. So once you learn how and what your body needs for a workout, then we start using those numbers. So the challenge is if you start taking in carbohydrates and they're excess that we don't even need, then all of a sudden we have to deal with a surplus situation. Surplus is good if you're looking to fully bulk out and really build muscle. However, the challenge is what most people are looking for is to build muscle and lean out at the same time. So in order to do that, it can't be all on one side, all full crazy diet, nor can it also be all full crazy bulk. Right. You know, most bodybuilders will tell you, yeah, throw those carbs in in the evening so you're resting and sleeping on them so that you can use them in the workout the next day which is why you mentioned like if we happen to be hitting legs or a big muscle group in the morning, the challenge with that is most professional bodybuilders have a bulk season and have a cut season. But what about the normal average, like everyday schmo who just wants right. to look decent and, you know, basically isn't afraid of getting naked. Uh, right. What, what about that guy? <laughs> that's where it comes in because since this is like a year round thing, we want to try to find something that's going to work on a daily basis, something that's also sustainable. And so what that is, is not looking at putting yourself in some crazy surplus. What's sustainable is learning what your body needs for fuel to be able to produce in the actions you want it to produce in. So we're trying to understand is, okay, if we're going to do a certain workout that uses certain muscles, we're going to need this amount of fuel. If we're going to do a big, big workout that needs big muscles, we're going to need more fuel. And then the, when you work out changes as well. So if you're working out in the evenings, you can work your way up and fuel to that workout. If you're working out early in the mornings, you're basically working out after eight hours of being fasted. So there's going to be minimal fuel in the system. So we have to make sure that if it is going to be an early workout, we need to prepare the system before you go to bed. Or if it's going to be an evening workout, well, there's no need to put a ton of surplus in before you go to bed. Carbohydrates do one of the main things that causes that size in the mirror, and that's just water retention. So if you're putting in a bunch of carbohydrates before you go to bed, likely it's going to sit and cause some water retention because you're not going to be burning as much fuel when you're asleep. Yeah, I noticed that when we did the when we did that carb sort of fast where we had it was even a little bit more extreme than than no carbs the last two meals. It was more like like half the carbs as normal the first two meals and the rest were no carbs when i did that i noticed that like all the water just right. got we all the water left and almost i don't want to say instantly because that's just not i don't want to say instant, but within like a week within a week all of a sudden it looked like my whole body started shrink wrapping right. and all the muscles right. that were there uh and, and it wasn't so much a lot of it was water weight obviously but they all just started popping you yeah. know and it's amazing how different you can look between that. So like if you were doing a photo shoot or something like that, or you wanted to look good for a certain thing, you could literally just do that and you would look, you know, three to four months worth of better in mm -hmm. like a week simply by draining all that water and sort of revealing what muscles you have by 
get, getting rid of the carbs for a certain amount of time. Right. Um, I thought that was, that was incredible, you know? Um, yeah. and I noticed that like a, a lot of it is the timing of what you're doing. Like for instance, like let's say I do jujitsu at seven 30 in the evening, very intense cardio, right? I'm done at, you know, nine. So now it's like nine o'clock at night. That's late. I would normally never have carbs at nine o'clock at night, but because I just did such an intense session, I now can right. have carbs and they get sucked right up by my body. Right. And it was, and it's like, it's okay. So I think it's important to note, at least based on what you taught me is that it's not necessarily about meal timing. I mean, it is, but it's like knowing what's happening at those times because right. it's simply saying, oh, you can't eat carbs at night is like a blanket statement. It's right. more about what you're doing, what you're going to do the next day, what you've done that day. And when you time that, and I, I find it fun. It, it like for me, knowing what I get to eat and don't get to eat based on my activity and based on what I'm doing, it's kind of cool because it's like, all right, if I want to go out to dinner, like for instance, when we, we do leg day on Friday. So I like mm -hmm. to always schedule a nice hefty dinner on right. Friday because that's like the one day where you can really, you know, suck up all those carbs, like pretty much all day. And so I get that one day a week where I get to have a big ass meal at night and that sort of satisfies me. So to me, and this is just like a mindset thing for me, right? Instead of having a cheat day where you eat a bunch of crap and then you feel bad and then you're potentially risking yourself getting off of your diet, um, instead, why not just do it like that where you have a very hard workout on a certain day, very large compound movements, very large muscles like your legs, and you plan to have that cheat meal after that workout or later on in the day after that workout, that way you're literally taking your cheat meal and you're integrating it into your training and into your right. whole plan so that you're actually staying on track. It's not even really a cheat meal, but it That's is. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Where it ends up becoming a regular meal, a proper fuel source. You know, like you're getting ready to take a cross country trip and you fill up the tank. It's really nothing different. But it's if you're just driving to St. Pete, why would you then fill up the tank, you know, in that analogy, right? You know, it's yeah. like, we can't, if we like, if you fill up your gas tank in your car, it's going to spill out and go onto the floor. You know, when you fill out extra with your meals, it fills out <laughs> around the stomach or around the arms or wherever people don't want to hold fat. It doesn't just spill out. So it definitely has to be used. And that's going to be a combination of when you're eating and why you're eating. So when you just mentioned about how you did jujitsu for all that time, of course there has to be some type of fuel going in because if you then go to bed your system is amped and your system is going to be recovering and burning and moving and going Eating muscle while you're sleeping right so when you wake up so that you're recovered but the only way that that can happen is by taking that lean muscle and so even if you were to get just a protein and fiber meal in right it's you got to think about what's still burning all night long and if our goal is to build muscle, we need to make sure at no point in time you're in a depleted state. You know, like there, we should only be depleting when we're really getting ready to go on stage. Otherwise, it's nothing but a carb cycle, a high carb day or a low carb day. Certain but these same rules still apply to a normal schmo looking to lose weight, right? Right, right. It's just, it's just you don't have to go quite as extreme as somebody getting on stage, like, you know, uh, uh, working out five days a week for two or three hours and, and eating, uh, I mean, but, but even if you just followed that same line of logic, cause that's what I've seen from your clients, right? right. You, maybe they're not trying to get on stage, but you still essentially use the same line of logic with them. And the transformations are so fricking rapid. Right. It's insane. And I, I've always believed in that. Like, I don't, this is what I don't get. Why do people try to lose weight by looking at these fad diets like Atkins diet and this diet and keto, keto and all this, this marketing bullshit, okay? When you can just go, okay, who's consistently losing weight and, and shredding up the fastest? Professional fighters and bodybuilders. End of right. story, no argument needed. The, bodybuilders, and professional fighters can lose rate and shred up consistently over and over, over again. It's kind of like if you, if there were two, if there was like 10 airlines, right? And, you know, eight of them crashed a plane every other day. And then two of the airlines had like 
hardly any crashes, and they were super consistent. Which airline would you go with? Right. You know, right. and and you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so so yeah, maybe. But you but you'd still go with that same airline whether you were taking a 12 hour flight or you were taking a 30 minute flight. And the thing is, is that to me, looking at people like bodybuilders and looking at people like professional fighters, which the diets and, and how they work that are actually very similar, shocking. Um, <laughs> you know, looking at somebody who is consistent, why not, maybe you don't go as extreme as that, but if you're just a normal person like trying to lose weight, why not model that and learn from those people and stick with something that is consistent and that works yeah you don't have to go as hardcore as them unless that's something you want to do but why do all these bs diets you see at 2 a.m on the home right. shopping network or whatever or that you see you know glamorized in ads and in in and tv and on stupid doctor shows and just go after the people that consistently hit weight that they need to hit every single time right you know that's what i've always thought about um, I don't, I don't like yeah. to, I like to model success. I don't like to mess, mess with things, you know? It sounds like uh, comfort and ease is really what I've had. Everyone that pulls up those diets and says, well, why can't I do this and this and this? And it's because they cater to what the person really wants to still be able to do. But when it comes to wrestlers and fighters and bodybuilders, comfort and ease is not even on the table. Like we don't, who cares? You know, it's yeah. not about how, if it's comfortable or if it's easy, it's, no, it's simple. There's a difference between easy and simple. It's simple. One plus one equals two. You do this, you get the result. If you try to come up with new stuff and try to experiment, there's a good chance that you won't get the result. And the challenge with a lot of people with these, when they bring all these other diets to me is they're like, oh, well, this one says that, you know, I can have my Cinnabon, you know, daily, as long as I do it at this certain time. <laughs> Cinnabon daily. Yeah. That's I hilarious. just used it because I, someone just brought it to me. <laughs> wow. And my point was like, I would ask like, what, like to me, I would say to that person, why are you even here? Like if you want to have a Cinnabon right. daily, why are you even trying to lose? Like, why is that something that you want to do? Because to me, you know, you either, I, I, I mean, you shouldn't be able to eat a Cinnabon daily and lose weight. That's just like you shouldn't be able to be lazy and make a million dollars. Just right. like you shouldn't be able to have a hit record and not be able to sing or play an instrument or write music. That I know happens. But, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like these right. are things that are not supposed to happen. So right. if you want to lose weight, now I'm not, now let's say you've lost weight and you're shredded. Could you have some Cinnabons here and there? I mean, I've seen you. I've seen you eat chocolate and stuff because you've done the work ahead right. of time to get to the point where, yeah, you can have some of that stuff and still be fine. Maybe you have 10 abs showing instead of 12, you know? <laughs> but 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 what I'm saying is, is that if you're already in a surplus and you're already overweight and you're not happy with yourself and you want to lose weight and you want to be in better shape, now is not the time to try to, try to fit in Cinnabons, you right. know? Do yeah. that after you've hit your goal and it's, it's, it's a mindset, you know, right. it's, it's, uh, it's entitlement. It's like, well, I want to have, I want to have hot and cold, you right. know? Exactly. No, there's, there's no winter on freaking you know, uh, uh, Venus. Um, maybe there is, I probably just talked out of my ass when I said that, but I'm pretty sure that it's pretty hot. I was wondering where you had, I was like, it's pretty hot on Venus. No I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you agree with that? Like, like right. if you go, cause like when I work with entrepreneurs, that's you know, what I was going to yeah, relate it to. Th yep. th this is what it is. Dan, um, I have this company, I have this business I started, or maybe they haven't started a business, right? Maybe they're, they're, they're wanting to start a business. Well, I only want to be able, well, here, here's the, here's the biggest question I get that drives me nuts. Well, how many hours a day do I need to put into this? Mm. What do you mean? How many hours? A, so what are your, I said, what are your expectations? How much money do you want? Well, I want to make a million dollars. You want to make a million dollars. And your first question is how much time Right. Do you want to put it? Can I do it in an hour a day? I only have an hour a day. Oh, you want a million dollars, <laughs> but you want to do it in right. an hour a day. Like what kind of fucked up world are you living in? Right. Like what you don't deserve a million dollars with that attitude, that mindset, you don't deserve it. And the key to, to making a million dollars, the key to becoming in shape, the key to whatever your goal is, is not to have it. It's to become the person that can make it happen. In right. other words, it's not to make, it's not to, to do it, it's to deserve it. Because right. people who deserve things, they get those things. They get them, right. And if you, people who say, I wanna eat a Cinnabon every day, people who say, I only wanna work on my business an hour a day, you don't deserve it. 
That's right. why you don't have it. So instead of working on getting it, work on becoming the person that deserves it. Right. To me, that's the ultimate like paradigm shift in your mind that you got to make to actually get those things. And I look, I'm not trying to do a holier than thou thing because there's times in my career, even recently, where I'll slow down, right? And I will, I will introduce bad habits and I'll have to look back at, I'll have to look at myself and say, wait a minute, you want these things, but you're not willing to X, Y, Z. And I have to check right. myself on that. Even at, even at a, a, I'm not saying at a high level, there's got like freaking Jeff Bezos and stuff. Those guys are like max level. I'm like, Pfft. but point is, you know, from where I came delivering pizza for seven years, I'm right. at a pretty high level in comparison. And even at that level, even at that difference, I still have to catch myself and go, what are you doing, man? Like, like you expect to do this, that, and the other thing and not do this and that. And I have to recheck myself. It's like a constant mindset maintenance to recheck your, if your expectations meet your dedication, because right. if they don't, you don't deserve it. End of story. Work on deserving it. Absolutely. You know? So let me ask you this. What do you think is the biggest mistake? And let, let's leave like people who are trying to get on stage and bodybuild out of it because that's like a whole different thing. But like your average person, especially, and I, I'll, I'm going to keep going back to this because I think a lot of people that watch this show, they're some sort of entrepreneur. And right. if they're not, they're at least some sort of busy, you know, not that, I mean, most people are busy, but entrepreneurs or people working on something, you know, you have people working and then you have people working on something. Right. And usually people working on something are also working and working on something. So they're yeah. extra busy. And then if you add kids in, it's like a whole new level. So, um, you know, wh what do you think is the number one biggest overall mistake that people make when it comes to losing weight and getting in shape? I think that the biggest thing is just not learning the proper path and not taking the time to learn. So when I think about these entrepreneurs and people that are really busy, most of them have a coach of some sort because their goal is to be successful. They don't want to waste time. And so I think that someone who's listening to this can really relate to not wanting to waste time. There isn't any time to waste. And so a lot of times just trying to go about the weight loss process without any type of guidance and just something you see online is going to do just that. It wastes a ton of time. And so the confidence that they can do it on them by themselves is just barely even there may get confident from one of those two o'clock in the morning commercials that pops on. But what is that going to do when the next day comes around, all the fires come up that you got to put out and there's just no thought. It's like, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? So I think the biggest thing is people just not taking the time to learn the appropriate path. But they'll hire a coach for business or right. something else, you know, but they won't hire a coach for their health. And right. then, you know, health is wealth. Like if you're not, I'll tell you right now, my ability to be healthy has had a major impact on my bank account, you oh, know, yeah. major, right. major, major impact. And a lot of people don't realize that like, if you don't feel good all day, you're not going to be able to concentrate and perform at a, at a high level in your business or whatever it is you're doing. And so you're going to produce a lower quality of work and decisions and all that. If you're in shape, and you feel good all day. And since I, since we've been working out, I felt great. Like even, here's the funny thing, even on days when I did something happen, I only got like three or four hours of sleep, which thankfully isn't often, but when it does happen, I still feel really good. Right. Like better than days before when I got a full night's sleep. Now, obviously if I did that several days in a row, that would suck. But if it happens just one day, you know, and, and, and every other day is pretty decent sleep, I still feel great. And uh, before, if I would have had three or four hours sleep one night, I'd be trashed right. all day. And the whole day, like whatever I did that day, you know, and, and even when I got sleep, the, the quality of food and just being overweight, it, it just, it, it's not the same. Like everything, not, not just how you feel so that, you know, you get up and you do things and you feel motivated. Cause when, when you're in shape, and also when you're seeing gains and you're seeing yourself lose weight, you get motivated. And that motiva motivation actually trickles over into other categories and aspects of your life. Right. And for me, like when I see somebody, and I, I'm going to get so much heat for this fucking comment. Uh, there we go. <laughs> when I see somebody, I, don't, I look, I got to go with truth here. You know, when I see somebody who comes to me 
and they say, Dan, you know, I, I, I'm struggling in my business. I'm really struggling, right? Sometimes I'll, I'll look them up on social and I'll see things like them drinking all night, like constant pictures of them drinking all night, or I'll see that they're overweight. And when I see somebody who is trying to be a business owner and they're trying to succeed at that, but I also see that they're overweight and I also see that they don't eat good and I also see that they drink too much alcohol. The thing I think of is, well, you do some things like you do everything. So if you don't take care of your body, what makes you think you're going to take care of your business? Right. You know, like, I mean, I'm not saying there aren't business people that are out of shape and overweight, but I mean, look, look at Donald Trump. I, I get it. He's overweight, but did you know he's never had a drink in his entire life? He's never smoked a cigarette in his entire life. Did you know that? Yeah, that's a little known fact about him. A lot of people don't know. He has never had a sip of alcohol, at least not, I mean, at least that I know of that, that you know, he has said this multiple times, but um, he had a brother that was like a really nice guy and uh, he, his entire life was ruined by alcohol and mm -hmm. cigarettes, um, mainly alcohol. But he told his, you know, his younger brother, uh, Donald Trump, he said that, you know, never drink, never smoke, because it ruined my life. And I guess that just stuck with him. You know, like when you're young, right. certain moments like that stick with you and he has never drank or, or had a, a, a cigarette. And the man, you know, way before the whole presidency thing, you know, the man, you know, did a lot of things that you would consider successful, um, whether you like him or hate him, it's irrelevant. Right. You know, you gotta respect the grind. Right. And uh, he's never had, he's never had, but, but he'll have a Coke. Like every, you know, yeah, he had a button in the Oval Office Just to bring him a fresh coke. To bring him a fresh coke, he would press the button and bring him coke. You know, so. But I mean, for protein shakes, <laughs> right? Yeah, Some exactly. Big chicken or something. Yeah, or actually, that's a, a good point you gave to me. I want to go into some of the tips you've given me that have really helped change. Um, but I, I just wanted to really nail on that point that for the most part. Uh, if you're trying to build your business, cause you also got to remember a lot of these guys that are, that are overweight, that have big businesses, they're overweight a lot of times because they've already made it and like, mm -hmm. Hey, why not enjoy life now? And whatever. Right. I, I don't want to be that person. Like I always want to be in shape, you know, but, but you do some things like you do everything. And that's right. the same reason you're out of shape. The same reason you can't find time to go to the gym. The same reason you have to have that cinnamon every day is probably also the same reason why you're fucking broke and your business isn't working. Same reason, it's all up here, you right. know? But right. that said, I wanna go into some things that really helped me, that you that you uh, gave me. And one of them, and we've talked about this multiple times, one of them was um, the book bag trick. Mm. So yeah. let me, let me kind of set the stage for this. <laughs> so I'm a busy entrepreneur, getting up in the morning and doing cardio can be very challenging. Uh, especially when there's just not a lot of time in the day. So when I get up in the morning, there are several things that happen. I have to like deal with a lot of things. I have to answer questions in from my team so that they have answers so they can do stuff for the rest of the day. I don't really do a lot of work, but I have to, like me sitting down here and doing this podcast interview is probably the most work that I do or shooting those stupid video ads that I do. <laughs> but, but in terms of actual work, I don't really do much. I mostly just give answers, create ideas, talk to my team. And so I have to be able to do that. If I get up and I work out and I, then I take a shower and then all this stuff. And it's like heading towards the afternoon and I haven't given those answers. It's, it's difficult. You know, it's, it's, it's not good. So what I, um, what you told me one time is like, okay, well, do you like to walk? And I said, yeah, I love to walk. I love to do what I call a morning knowledge walk where I, uh, and that's how I got exercise before I would walk and I put mm -hmm. my AirPods in and I would either, uh, how I would normally do is I would answer my, my team. I'd answer them over Voxer or Slack. And then I would listen to an audiobook because I got to get my audiobooks in every day. Right. Well, what you showed me was take a book back, put a bunch of books in it, make it really heavy and do the same walk. And let me tell you, when you strap a book bag on full of like 40 pounds of books <laughs> or 50 pounds of books, and you take that same 30 minute, 45 hour long walk, man, you are sweating. Like that is, that is a workout. And so I started right. doing that and literally was able to do all the things I normally, you know, 
listen to audiobooks, um, do uh, handle small issues with my team, communicate with them, and do all of that while walking with that book pack. And when I got back, there was my cardio. Obviously, it's not quite as good as a stairmaster or doing jujitsu or something like that, but it's way, way better than not doing anything. Right. And that was like a huge hack. And so if you're an entrepreneur, this is a huge thing. Grab a book pack, put those books in it, and walk and handle right. your business. And you can't tell. And here's, here's a daddy hack. Um, so I actually took that to the next level. Right. When I have my son on weekends, I can't work out because he's three. You know what I mean? I got to have, and this is, this is another problem. People with kids, whew, people yeah, with kids, challenge. guess what? People have kids. We're human beings. <laughs> There's 6 billion of us on the planet and most of us have kids, right? You are not special because Figure you have out. kids. Figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Cause if you love your kids, you won't let yourself get out of shape and not be able to spend time with them or you want to be around for them. Right. And so what I do is when I have my kid, I still get my cardio in. I take him, I put him on my shoulders. So he's like 40 pounds, right? That's mm -hmm. like 40 pounds. So put him on my shoulders. I walk from my condo all the way downtown to the pier, which is a good yeah. wow. 30 minute walk. I let him play at the park. Then I walk all the way back. So that's like an hour of a walk with a 40 pounds on my shoulders. Right. And he loves it because he's up in the air. Right. He's like super high. He can <laughs> see everything. You know, people are waving at him while he goes by. He's mm -hmm. loving it. He's like, you know, grabbing onto my head and stuff. Or like I'll sometimes like I'll grab like a bottle of water or a snack for him and I'll like lift it up and stuff. Yeah. He's having a good time. I'm getting my cardio in for right. sure. Like figure it out. And that's the thing is, the thing that makes you successful, whether it's health, whether it's business, whatever, it's being resourceful, Right. being resourceful. And a lot of people, you know, I hate to say this, but if you're not resourceful, if you can't be resourceful for something simple, like getting, getting some workouts in and figuring it out, you're not going to be resourceful when you have a major problem in your business. And so right. people say, well, I, I'm going to work on my business. I, 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 I don't. You know, I'll deal with the health stuff later. That right there is why your business is failing. Right. You know? Right. It's definitely being translated into other things. Yes. Procrastination. You know? yeah. And it makes me think of two people I've worked with. One who has probably spent the last two and a half years immobile because he had a stroke. And this is somebody I worked with on a regular basis. And I always talk to him. It's like, man, you're not getting enough sleep. You're doing way too much stressful of a job and you're not eating right. And when he would eat certain things, he would get gout, but he would, it was just a thing. He was just like, yeah, my, my gout's flaring up because I had whatever the night before. So it was like a, just a not, not caring at all. And in no way would you ever want to wish a stroke on anyone. But at a certain point in time, the body just gives up, whether it's stress related, exhaustion related, many different things that can yeah. onset a stroke. And this was a high level pharmacist and a very big time community leader working in the community all the time. And I meet with him on a weekly basis now via online. And I just keep that relationship going because he's an incredible person. But now years of building to become a pharmacist and building his business, make all that. The goal was to make a ton of money. So much money has been spent on hospital bills. Yeah. He had to sell his car. He's telling me now he's trying to figure out how to sell his house all this stuff, years of not sleeping and just putting in the work and it's all disappearing, you know? And, and a different story of a guy who I was able to work with and help him lose over a hundred pounds. He, when we started, he was like, I really want to get this new job, but I went to go look at the office, did the interview and everybody in there is in shape. And he was like, I don't know that they're going to discriminate against me, but if they, what if they were to look at me and say, if he can't figure out his health, how is he going to figure out the responsibilities to work in this department? See, and that, you know, that's the thing, man, is, is sometimes, you know, that's a tough thing because again, it goes back to how you do some things is how you do everything. And so like, mm. l let's just roll with that for a second. Let's say you don't get that job because you're overweight, right? Or at least that's obviously that's, going to be in his mind. Yep. And it's, and, and, it's, and it's technically discrimination. It is, but what was, you know, it doesn't matter where we're at historically or what kind of liberal or conservative agenda you want to throw at it. At the end of the day, subconsciously, regardless of 
whether you watch one news channel or the other, what, what, regardless of what side of the political spectrum you're on, let's get real honest here. You know, is it okay to discriminate against somebody because they're overweight or this? No, it's not. But on a subconscious level, if you're in a high stress environment or job where you have to really be on your A game and you're out of shape subconsciously, even if people don't know it, they may judge you, not even knowing it, not even, right. not even like really realizing it. They, they may not even know why, like, I, don't, I don't think that person can handle it, right? And they may not even know why they're saying that, but on a deep level, and it's not just being overweight, maybe you're, maybe you're an alcoholic, maybe you're, uh, right. maybe yeah. you're uh, whatever, right? M maybe you're uh, a, uh, like a, a, a daredevil or something, and they're like, oh, this person could die <laughs> and I, you know, you know, I mean? like whatever it is, people yeah. will make such subconscious judgment. And if you take the whole like thing out of it of, of oh, is it right or wrong? You know, it, it doesn't matter. Like it matters, but for you, like at the end of the day, if you have enough reasons to get in shape, if you have enough reasons, you know, like you got to see your kids. You get, and I'm not talking about being a little bit overweight. I'm talking about like being to the point where, you know, like your heart does not care about what's politically correct. You know what I mean? Like right. your heart is not going to go, you know what? I'm not going to have a heart attack today because that would be body shaming. It's not mm. going to do that. It's just going to have a fucking heart attack. Right. And that's it. Right. And I'm not trying to like throw shade at anybody who's overweight because there's people who are overweight who can't control it, like they have thyroid issues or whatever. But if it is within your control and it's because you just haven't taken care of yourself and there's people that love you, there's people that your children, your sister, your brother, your parents, people you've inspired, friends. If right. you're not going to do it for you, at least do it for the people that care about you. Right. You know what I mean? Like people forget about that, you know, because if you don't pay, if you don't pay for your health now, oh, you know, healthy food's expensive. Oh, the gym, whatever. If you don't pay for your health now, you'll end up paying for it later. Absolutely. You and know? it'll be more expensive. Yeah. 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 It would be it way could more change your whole life. It could change your life. And this is harsh, man. This is probably like whatever, whatever you want to call it, like a trigger it would probably trigger some people, but I've been overweight. I've been like, I mean, I haven't been a hundred pounds overweight, but I've been a solid, you know, I would say 170s, 40s, 45 pounds overweight. I've been 45 pounds heavier than I am now. I think my heaviest, I was like 208. You remember mm -hmm. the picture, right? Yep. Actually, Brandon, you should show that picture when you get a chance, it's like the, the one of me when I was like at my worst and then uh, me, me now, uh, the, the, the transformation is just freaking stupid, you right. know, but ultimately, um, dude, I did not feel good then, you right. know, I did not feel good at all. Like I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't go hiking. I, I was like, it was bad, you know, right. like if I want to go hiking with like a girlfriend or something, couldn't do it, just nope. couldn't do it. You know, it's not about, it's not about people. Oftentimes I think they, they, they focus too much on the aesthetics and they don't think about like the health, right? Like maybe, maybe somebody's not, maybe it's not about how you look or if you're sexually attractive, maybe it's more about the fact that you're going to have a fucking heart attack and you're not going to be here for your loved ones, you know? And obviously we're talking about people who have a massive weight problem, but I think these same, would you agree that these same rules apply whether you're massively overweight or whether you're just trying to shred up? Yeah, absolutely. It's more like the degree in right. which you, which you use them. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I think it's like upgrading, you know, the, the processing system, you know, like refreshing things and getting a better, a better system to move more efficiently. And like you said, with motivation and confidence, if you're out here confident, getting goals and crushing goals and maybe not even crushing, but just working towards the goal that is going to build a type of confidence, especially if you're doing something you've never done before. Because why would you have never, if you hadn't done it before, there's a reason it never happened. So something stimulated this excitement. Maybe it was a coach, maybe it was a new job, maybe it was social media, something. And people can use that as a fuel, but then also at the same time, like you said, they can get stuck into that aesthetic circle, that, that round where you're just going round and round and just really not accomplishing anything when it comes to mental focus. Because there's many people who can get the body that they deserve, but they still don't have, like mentally, they're still really depressed as if they were still the same before. So it's trying to think of, you know, yes, we're changing the body, but what is that really doing for the mind? And so I like to think of, 
you know, that whole mindset versus identity and understanding that this is who you are now, not just trying to change your mindset to think like, oh, I'm, I'm going to start living healthy. It's like, no, we're, we're literally changing every fabric. So it's not, if I make the decision, I might be successful. It's no, I'm doing this right now. So I will be successful. It's coming yeah. to the understanding that there's a reason that we're doing this. And I agree with you. I'm, I, I don't, go into the whole body shaming and go into that and messing with people. But it's more about understanding what's going on on the inside of the body. If you're in a situation where the heart is about to have an attack, yeah. I'm not talking about being slightly curvy or something, right? You know, not like that's not, you know, I'm talking about when you're in bad health shape, like when you right. got serious problems and it's not something that is outside of your control, it's just bad eating habits. Right. And you're in a position where, it's, it's not just like, oh, I'm a little bit hefty. And, you know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when it's like a major health issue and your doctor's looking at you like, what the fuck? You know, right. that's what right. I'm talking about. Um, because there, I mean, look at, look at guys like Tyson Fury. That dude right. is not by any stretch of the imagination having an aesthetically pleasing body. <laughs> but he's like, he's in the conversation for GOAT. You know, you can't deny that. Like greatest heavyweight. I mean, right. I'm not saying he is. I'm not, but he's in the conversation. You know, he, he's never. Brandon, he's Tyson Fury's never been beaten, right? I'm not. I'm pretty sure he's completely undefeated. Not familiar with his record. And he and he beat Dante Wilder three times in a row. Right. Like, and the guy looks like he just got off of the, the couch. You know. Yeah. So like, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you're, in bad bad shape. You know. Right there's so many degrees you know right. but the other thing is like maybe you are slightly overweight okay great but if you want like if you're okay with that fine but if you're not okay with that and you want to look better you got to treat it the same way as if you want to make more money like right. you got to put in the work you got to put in the dedication what do you think like for you when you were skinny and you gained massive amounts of muscle crazy amounts of muscle in a relatively short amount of time what was the biggest mindset shift in your head that allowed you to do that mm. it had to have been belief after seeing a little bit of results you know i was already a business owner so i already had 100 percent faith that i could do things for myself if i wanted it i'd just go out and, and go get go after it i think that when i started noticing when i started seeing the gains of course but then also not experiencing any injuries not experiencing any massive bulks where I wasn't still able to see myself, you know, where, where I was seeing the development for me, it showed me, I was just like, okay, so this, this can be done. There can be a such thing as building muscle and keeping lean at the same time while also still building my business. And the fact that I was able to be successful in both worlds. And when I went to my first show, it wasn't about winning the show. It was about going through the experience. I have a military father. And so anything that's discipline related, I just fall right into. I really enjoy it because I, I was raised following systems in a way. You know, I was like, you do this, this, and this, you will get this. And so it's that's why when the, when I had the book, I was like, this is a simple thirty day thing. All right, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it just went along with with the way I'm used to learning, and I saw just a lot of results. And also, I was still coaching. So when I started learning these new techniques, of course, I started sharing them with the people that could use them properly, and I started seeing results there as well. So I started thinking, okay, there's gotta be a magic between how I'm eating, how I'm training, how I'm recovering, and also how I'm sleeping. So I started to realize like, okay, if I really put effort into this, this is gonna be successful. And then it kinda, it boosted my business too, because I saw the success and growth. And, and the thing is to do that show, it took me away from my business because I got so focused and I, and I had to really, I had to remember it was, four weeks I had yeah. to get down and ready. So yeah, but you're talking about doing like a show, a bodybuilding right. show, not, not just getting in shape. Like this is like, a, right. That's why it took you away from your business. Do you, do you think that you can have a business? Like, do you think you can have a business and get in really good shape without sacrificing, uh, the, the dedication and the focus you put on your business? Absolutely. And that was why, where I was going is to think of, I was trying to do that in four weeks. It was just like, like, it was a drastic, drastic change. Yeah, that's extreme. You know? And there's really, and it's not sustainable. And there was really only reason was because I was challenged to get on the stage. 
However, like for yourself, with your training and now how I train myself, I'm training with the goal of there's no show coming up in four to six weeks. I'm My show right now is building my business. And so for me, with this new version of my business building online, I need to spend a lot of time networking with people and getting in these groups and doing all this stuff. I need to really baby this business to make sure that it grows. And so initially the first thing I did, because before I used to work out five, six days, some seven days a week sometimes, and there was gains, but I had to eat to be able to work out that much. So when I started training with you, uh, I started, I started thinking to myself, I was like, you know what, let me put myself onto just a three day a week program. Let me make sure that I'm really training well. Let me make sure that I'm getting in my nutrients. Let me make sure I'm getting my rest, but I can still focus everything on, onto my business. And believe it or not, I had better gains and strength and just seeing my body metabolize food better on the three days. And here and there I'll do, of course I do cardio on a regular basis. I stretch on the other days as well, right. but I'm not taking a ton of time away from my business. And so it has literally changed my whole way of thinking in Whereas it's not about a show. It's not like, how can I get in the best shape possible? It's how can I build myself to be able to support my business so that way I can be sharp. And that for me doesn't mean being 5% in body fat. You know, what keeps me sharp and keeps me going is successful workouts and getting into that and leaving the gym, feeling like I worked myself out, got a good workout, didn't take a ton of time was able to, of course, share and network and communicate and have that social aspect of things. But the biggest thing is, is it's not taking a ton of time. And so I think that what a lot of people can use from that is that you don't have to live in the gym to get the results. Are the extreme group, the bodybuilders and fighters and the ones we were talking about, are they? Yes. But at the same time, there's that goal of trying to get to a certain point in a very short amount of time. Now, if you're thinking, okay, I want to sustain, we're talking about a lifestyle change. We're talking about something that is going to last for more than just a couple of months. Or like a lot of us who will go on stage, as soon as we get done with that competition, we're eating up and people will call it bulk, right? Mm. But just to kind of fill back up, but that's not sustainable. And so the goal here is to find something that you can do on a daily basis or more like a weekly basis. Not saying that you're hitting heavy, hard weights every single day, but your nutrition is on point. You're making sure that you're getting your meals in. You're making sure that you're getting your sleep in. All those little things to make sure that the next day is the most productive that it can be. Whether it be your workout or whether it be that big sales presentation. So I find myself trying to work with people and trying to figure out like, okay, so what is the schedule that has to happen for work? What does it have to be? Where, where is it? And then we try to look at like, where can we fit in the little things? Some people really have minimal time, no time at all. So in order for me to work with that person in their transformation, it's going to be much more diet related because this is going to be something they don't have an extra hour or two or three to be able to do their cardio, be able to get their training in also stretch as well. So I have to look at that whole week schedule and be like, okay, this is going to be your flexibility moment for the week. We're going to really dial down on specific stretches, whatever, whatever. Then as we move into other body parts and other parts of the week, it's like, okay, so today where we talk about, you need to have a higher carbohydrate day because we're going to spend some time working the legs, right? But if they're in a situation where they can't work out that day, we look at the little bit of time that they have. We look at where the nutrition is right now and we make the adjustments based on that. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that I try to do with people is to get them eating right. Because just by eating right and boosting your metabolism yourself, you can start to see changes, not only feeling different, but also looking different too. And that's just off of food. So many times that's the first place I start because these people are going to eat, you know, so now it's just a matter of what they're going to eat. And then a lot of times with busy entrepreneurs, they're not eating enough. So then it's like, okay, so let's look at the amount of calories we need for the day. Where do we break it up? How do we break it up? And how do you have to get it in? So some meals I have you, you know, of course, getting your food in, but other days where it's busy, you have to take a shake. And that's where, so that's one like little example of how you can help with time. You know, something that's already broken down, goes in with water and can be digested very quickly. Now, again, we always, I will put in here because I'm saying that that's a supplement. Real food is always going to be better. But when it comes to teaching someone how to understand what their body needs calorie wise, I need to get them the calories in the first place. 
So right. if I can teach someone like they're gonna be like, wow, I, you know, I had a certain amount of calories this day and they're really feeling better. It's like, okay, that's the feeling we're after. Now let's break down this meal plan so that we can get other options in here, the right time of day, the right type of food so that you can have that feeling. And many times that feeling that they can then broadcast out into their business. I'm like, okay, so let's use that in the gym, mm. you know? And it, it many times we just have to figure out where the time is. You know? Right. Right. Let me ask you one more question, one more short question, and then we'll, we'll end for this, uh, for this episode. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, I'll ask you where more, uh, where people can find out more about it. And, you know, to be honest, uh, uh, you have an amazing program where you work with people, uh, online to, to do everything you're talking about, to, to get their, their diet and their nutrition, uh, and their, their workout down. Uh, and the people in your program, they're getting crazy results. So I, I definitely want to plug that a little bit for you, but let me ask you one more question. Um, you, you, you agree that I think, what is it like 3,200 calories equals a pound of body fat, something like that. Like if you, if you burn, Oh, if you're burning. Yeah. So in other words, where I'm going with this is how do you have the, um, what do you, from a mindset perspective, from a mental game perspective, what do you do to fend off those urges to overeat? And, and I think what happens a lot of times, it's not even necessarily in the meals you eat, it's the snacking. And people think, well, I'm just going to have a handful of this or this or that. But in reality, you know, if you think about it, if you were trying to lose a, a pound of body fat per week and you take, I think it's, I think it's 3,200 calories and you divide that by seven, that's only 450 calories. So if you have a few handfuls of this and that, and that handful is like 100, 150 calories, well, you may wipe out your caloric deficit just in a few handfuls of things and just screw all that up, you know? Um, I don't know if you agree with that or not, but I know that when I like really got focused on eating my actual meal plan and not grabbing this and grabbing that, I worry about it a little bit less if we're like trying to bulk or whatever, but if I'm actually trying to lose weight and, and trim up, I get real focused on not doing that. And that makes a huge difference. I notice it like within a few days, I start to notice it. Right. And when I do snack and I do go, oh, this is just that, oh, this won't hurt you. I hate that. Well, just mm -hmm. one won't hurt you. I, I don't know. It's always hurt me, you right. know? Like, it's never one. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, exactly. And uh, how, like, what would you tell somebody from like a mindset perspective of how to really get over the, the not just overeating, but like the random snacking that actually really adds up and, and, and deters from their weight loss goal? Right. A lot of times people will think about it after the fact and it'll be a guilt, you mm -hmm. know, or, or they'll be upset with themselves. And the challenge with that is, you know, we can't have any of that type of energy going around. So I think it's, it's looking at it from before everything goes in and understanding what's the goal, what are we working towards and what is that really going to do for you? It's literally going to be a temporary relief. And the challenge with that is if you put the whole day's effort in, if you put weeks worth of effort in, what is the point? setting yourself back you know when it comes down to certain snacks when it comes down to certain carbs if you have felt what it's like to experience your body getting leaner getting sharper getting more of what you're looking for starting to understand that some of these things can kind of just set you back just even the little snacks like you did that little math right there it's very quickly to go from one chip to ten right and so the challenge with that is understanding okay so what is the result going to be if i end up doing this it's going to be a short-term enjoyment short temporary gain but then it's going to set you back on your actual goals yeah you know if you're in like you said a bulk position then you absolutely can you know you can kind of play around with that but if you're in a position where you're really trying to change your system if you're really trying to cut down if you're really trying to act if you have a good enough reason for your goal it should also be a reason on why to not cheat on your goal. You know, if that's going to limit, if that's going to slow down your process to be able to get to the goal, we need to be able to kind of be around some type of mentorship or coaching to be able to help you understand, hey, this is going to slow things down. You know, I remember we've talked multiple times about little things that you were snacking on or that you may have been introduced. And so all I break down with those is what it actually does for the system. Is it causing water retention? Is there too much salt so it's causing inflammation? You know, what is it really giving you? If you're hungry, why are you not eating another meal? 
Right. Yeah. Right. Like it'd be better to just eat eat another solid eat a meal, meal that you should. And I noticed that when I really started focusing on not doing that and I saw the results, it was a thousand times easier to stick to it because you're like, wait a minute, if I actually stick to this for even a week and I see that result, now it's like, wait a minute, all I have to do is not randomly snack, stick to this meal plan, and I'm actually going to freaking massively change the way I look. Then it becomes like 10,000 times easier. Right. And, you know, I just don't think people give themselves enough of a chance to see that result so that they can get that motivation. It's the same thing in business. When I didn't make any money, it was a lot harder to get motivated. But when I made that first dollar, you know, when I made that first dollar, it became infinitely easier to put in the work because you're like, wow, this works. And then it just snowballed. And next thing you know, I've got like a, a very, very successful business. And it was, it really just came down to that first result and seeing right. that first thing and getting motivated from that. Um, but you got to give yourself time to at least see the result initially, right. you know, and, uh, um, the, the tips you've given me on snack, the, the, the deli meat hack, amazing mm. that has worked really well like like if you're uh if you're hungry instead of snacking on like nuts or or something bad or like oh it's organic or oh it's vegan it must be fine vegan food is way worse for you than most food because it's it right. they pack extra calories in there to make it freaking taste better because it it you know vegan food without all the extra stuff they put in it tastes tastes like ass you know <laughs> it, it tastes like plant-based ass but it still tastes like ass there. you know <laughs> Um, and so it going and getting a pack of deli meat and when I'm hungry, simply snacking on the, um, the deli turkey, cause it's like super low calorie, it's high protein that has worked really well. Like I snack on that and I'm good. Right. Um, you know, or, or snacking on vegetables or something, but it's obviously the turkey's better. I get the spicy like right. turkey and it's just, it's, it's awesome. So, um, dude, that's, this, and that's the ahead. big thing with, with the snacking is understanding what is the snack doing for you, you right know, like that protein that turkey that you're eating protein is a building block for muscle so yeah it's it's giving you that oral fixation of eating but you're actually packing you're you're promoting what the actual goal is which is to build muscle but if we're just doing fiber right we're just getting a bunch of extra water in which is good but it's not doing anything for your muscle if your body's telling you it's hungry it's hungry for a reason especially if you're training like you are and so then the challenge is like, well, then what do carbohydrates do? You know, if we're snacking on chips and nuts and stuff like that, rice cakes and such like that, without the purpose of using the carbs, they're just going to retain water. Yeah. But you're going to see in the mirror when yeah. you don't want to see it in the mirror. Right. Right. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Um, where can people uh, find out more about you and, and follow you and see some of your stuff? Instagram or... Uh Yep, absolutely. Building the Instagram profile, that's at Myers Impact. That's M-Y-E-R-S-I-M-P-A-C-T. At Myers Impact. And then what I'm going to do is you have a pretty cool, uh, I don't know, it's like 15, 20 minutes, little video training that you yeah. have yeah. that kind of goes over like a summary of this stuff. And I think it's like 15, 20 minutes long. And uh, it's really good information. And of course, if somebody was interested in working with you or potentially seeing what that looks like they can uh, they can schedule speak with you after watching that but right. i'm going to leave a link to that in the show notes so that uh, people can check that out as well and it's an awesome video and i think it'll it'll help a lot of people and i do recommend uh you know anybody listening i, I definitely recommend will because he's especially if you're a busy entrepreneur for sure because that's exactly what i am and i've finally right. been able to get some consistent gains and uh uh, it's just, it's, it's really changed the game for me. So I appreciate that from you a lot. You're so welcome. anything I can do to put your name out there and spread the word is, uh, you know, it's important to me to do that because I think that, like I said, at the beginning of this, there's so many people out there that are so incredibly talented and so much better at what they do than a lot of the people out there that are, that have a name that have created something. And I just like to see the people who have really dedicated themselves to being good at what they do, get more attention and build a business out of that. So I highly recommend uh, anybody listening that you check out Will's stuff because it is, uh, it's freaking awesome. So dude, thank you so much for coming man. on. We'll have to do this again sometime. Thank you. you know, thanks man. Yeah, awesome. I appreciate it, man. All right, man.